Okay. So hello everybody. So uh, my presentation will be about the multimodal annotation for expressive communication. This is a joint effort of uh, three different uh, groups in our department. That's town, so natural language processing, then CM Tech, so the division people, and GTI, that's uh, human computer interaction avatar generation. So this um, this work within Maria de Maestro is complementary to a um, a Horizon 2020 project, and I'll introduce briefly this project as well. Okay, so here uh, very briefly the content. So um, what the, the general purpose of this, of this work is compilation of uh, training material for communication of embodied uh, conversational agents. So this means that we uh, multimodal in this sense means facial expressions, gestures and obviously also voice. No? So, and uh, I'll start therefore with the embodied conversational agents, basically pointing out what the shortcomings are and uh, of the state of the art in uh, these agents and what we want to achieve here in this project. Then we'll uh, go to the multimodal um, annotation for expressive communication, task, goal, challenges, then the corpus uh, we are working on the recordings, so that's uh, more or less healthcare domain, but also basic care and uh, other related issues. So then uh, the, uh, the fourth item is multimodal annotation of nonverbal cues. That is, for the, for the time being, we focus on nonverbal uh, communication and uh, in our uh, annotation task. And uh, even more, we focus on uh, effective uh, communication. So that is, we do not consider yet semantics, we just will want to annotate emotions, affections. Okay, so um, here are a couple of items we'll talk about. Then, uh, as we heard yeah, in the first invited talk yesterday, so data protection is a very important issue, and especially in this, as you can imagine, you know, so that's also if we communicate with people and we will see the domains we are working uh, in. So this is a very, very central uh, topic. And uh, then finally conclusions. So by the way, so I'll be sharing the talk with uh, Monica, no? so, uh, who is uh, doing the actual work. So I'll be doing the general talking and she will become more concrete. Okay, no, so I'll do this part, one, two, three, and then she will continue. Okay, so uh, embodied conversational agents. So they are, they are all over the place, no? So there are agents who are uh, taking us through the stock of a furniture store, no? So agents who help us to set up our TV, so then give us advice how to lose weight, etc., 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 no? So, and uh, the social companions are very important, or the aspect of social companionship is very important, and uh, in particular when we talk about conversational agents. The problem with the embodied conversational agents uh, nowadays is that uh, they are, let's say, monocultural and monolingual, more or less. So that it, if uh, it's very likely that we if we have a furniture store agent, uh, it will act the same way no matter whether we are in, uh, in Sweden, in Spain, in Morocco, or uh, in Australia. No? So, uh, and this is certainly uh, unsatisfactory, no? so because we act, we interact in different ways, no? so culturally speaking. So then they are uh, monolingual, we want to be multilingual, we want to interact in different languages, and um, Okay, so this is the state of the art in dialogue strategies usually. So what the agents use, that's a scripted dialogue strategy. So a ping pong strategy, you say something, I say something, etc. No, So there is no real kind of bargain and uh, etc. So the flexibility is rather restricted. No, and uh, if we look at, um, let's say, social and medical care aspect, so we need to be, or the agent needs to be expressive, no? so to be, uh, let's say, uh, compassionate, etc. No? So, and this is also uh, not yet the case. So, and we try to put a handle on those problems in this, in the Christina project, 
as I said, so this is a Horizon 2020 project and the three groups of uh, the department are involved. So what we're trying to do is to develop an agent with social competence, human interaction capabilities, and with uh, for interaction with migrants. Mm, so because they, uh, they are very interesting groups you know, to just to test how far we can get with our with our technologies. No? So, and we focus on three different migrant groups. So that's first, that's um, the group of elderly. And uh, as we know, elderly are in need of uh, a social companion. No? So they need to, to be entertained, you know? so to chat about the family, to, uh, about the weather, what's going on. Being remembered, reminded of uh, daily routines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, so and here in this case, no, just because keep in mind we are talking about multicultural aspects, so we are uh, here we focus on Turkish uh, migrants in Germany. So then the second migrant group that's illiterate people who are in need uh, of uh, mediation healthcare, healthcare uh, as such, so um, healthcare questions, but also uh, healthcare system questions. No? How can I get an appointment with a medical doctor, et cetera, et cetera. No, so here we're focusing on North African, uh, African migrants here in Spain. And uh, the last migrant group that's untrained people, uh, caregivers from Poland uh, who come to work in Germany. So they stay for three months or so in Germany and then go back. So they don't speak, usually they don't speak German, and they are not really qualified to do the job. No? So that is here we need to, let's say, mediate and to, uh, to uh, show them how to, well, to, to uh, learn or teach them the basic skills in, uh, in basic care. Okay, so well, the, the major goals of Christina are then the development of uh, reasoning-based flexible dialogue strategies that take cultural and social idiosyncrasies into account, equally as an emotion, the emotional state of the, uh, of the people, then should be multimodal. So this, the whole story is about multimodality, so that is facial expressions, gestures, and voice, as I said, and it should be able to learn. You know? So that is, if wants to communicate or to teach something, no, and to tell a story, so then needs to learn from the web. Okay, here is uh, the Christina pipeline. So we, we have here the users, so they can communicate with the agent in different, in, uh, in terms of facial expressions, gestures, voice. We analyze this, then we fuse all the information, we process it, and then we uh, separate again when we know what we want to say, so then we separate the different uh, modalities and then we communicate here. And obviously what, uh, what we are focusing on in our Maria de Maestro project, that's these parts here, no? so the analysis and the generation of different modalities, or more exactly preparing the uh, compiling training material for these components. Okay, so now we are uh, the multimodal annotation for expressive communication. What is the task? No, so uh, starting from the material that is recording of uh, semantically and culturally diverse material, uh, we want to annotate. Now we want to annotate synchronous asynchronous events of different modalities. And uh, what we want to get is yeah, an improvement of the quality of multimodal annotations so far, so uh, people working on the, let's say, uh, separate modalities, they annotate as they think it's okay for their modality. No? So that is, we want to unify, we want to make the annotation more coherent, and we think that it would be then good to increase the impact. And obviously this, this goes, no, so the, you know, the increase of impact goes with the increase of the quality. If we have a coherent multimodal annotation, so we think that the uh, impact of the corpora will be increased. No? Everybody will, will be using them no? because they are, they are better, they are more coherent, et cetera, et cetera. And 
So as a, let's say, side objective, that's uh, develop integrative research lines within our department. So we already started now. So we, as I said, we were working in about three groups are working together. And uh, I think that there are many more perspectives and many more, let's say, uh, goals to be achieved uh, working together. OK, so the challenges. So we have a technical challenge and we have a data management challenge. So the technical challenge is, uh, well, the annotation itself. So this means first uh, uh, definition or creation of annotation <coughs> guidelines. And this is a very, as we know, no, so those who annotate it. Uh, so no, that's a very tedious and time consuming task. No? So to, to figure out what the best annotation is. And then obviously once we have the annotation guidelines to ensure that uh, we have the annotators Trim to the uh, let's say to 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 follow the guidelines and to achieve um, a, a reasonable inter-annotator agreement. No? Only then will uh, will be, be able will will be able to use our annotated corpora. And to the challenge, the data management challenge. This is uh, accessibility and data protection. No? So we need to think about licensing, proprietary rights, treatment of sensitive data, et cetera, et cetera. And if we think that we are recording elderly people, uh, we think that we are recording, let's say, caregivers, et cetera. So this is really the, uh, very delicate issue. OK, so the corpus we are working on, so our recordings, you know, so in um, five different languages, that is, we assume that each language represents more or less a culture. So that is, we have German, Spanish, Polish, Turkish, and Arabic to cover all the use cases I mentioned before. No, so, so far, you see the distribution of the recordings no, so in German. So we have most of them. So then in Spanish are shared, then in, uh, in Polish and Turkish and Arabic. No, so they are still. Um, uh, we still have very little data. No? So, and, uh, so the recordings are in progress. The goal is to have 10 hours of recordings for each language, for each culture. And this is uh, quite a lot of material compared to what people usually have. In this case. OK, so now I'll uh, hand over to Monica to uh, explain the details of our work. Thank you. So, um, well, at the end of the day, what we want is computers that can recognize uh, when humans talk to them and that they can understand and make sense of the emotions that we convey with nonverbal behavior. And on the other hand, computers that are able to reproduce this kind of human-like uh, nonverbal actions, right? So uh, what do we need? Uh, all we need is, no, love, okay. All we need is data, yeah? Uh, we need data and we need annotated data. And as humans, whoops, as humans, uh, we, uh, when, when we try to make sense of what other people is saying, now, hopefully, you are, you are uh, getting more than my language only because <laughs> you're not hearing me. So uh, we use like a holistic kind of approach. So we listen to what we say, uh, but we also visually get clues and uh, meaningful clues from uh, how we say things, right? So this, uh, from a computational point of view, is very difficult to represent because uh, when we're trying to deal with emotional aspects in communication, uh, probably you may understand and perceive that I am being happy because I smile, but I might be nervous in fact, and some other people may perceive I'm nervous, but, but some other people may be confused. So how can we turn a subjective issue into an objective one? Well, 
using all the power of uh, mathematics and statistics and all that things. So, well, this is merely an example of what we do. We want to minimize perception bias, right? So what do we use? First of all, we use a valence arousal scheme, which is widely um, um, reported in the literature, but with the discrete labels. We're not saying this is happy, this is sad, because there is a lot of interference in those concepts as such. We use a fine grade scale, and we made some tests on the scale, to represent if this person is being a more or less in some way or some other uh, emotional state. So uh, then we are working on some guidelines that uh, the group of annotators so far is, well, all of them, all of us are expert annotators and they are experts in different fields. That means uh, people are developing <laughs> their own modules for recognizing face, for recognizing gestures, for recognizing voice, for natural language processing, so on, for representing this knowledge. So we've got a, a good interest in, in, in uh, having a good quality uh, labels, right? So um, those are the guidelines, and this is the annotated, annotation tool that we use, that's ELAN. And then what we do is once we annotate, we compute a score, which is a crumbbox of a score, that uh, tells us how, uh, how many annotators we need in order to reach a satisfactory agreement. That is, you can annotate subjectively a video, right? But um, um, it, in the end, uh, the, the whole group needs to achieve a certain a score within uh, this framework in order to accept that video as well. If it's not the case, then we take actions. We revise the video, we add more annotators or whatever it is, right? Once we get that, we compute another using another method called the collect method, which comes from medicine, in fact, and we are tuning in to our needs, these algorithm. Uh, but, uh, well, so far we can get roughly, it's not uh, precise, now, but we're working on it. Uh, we, we get a consensus, which is this line down. Oh my God, sorry. Okay, which is this line. This is the consensus agreement, taking into account all the different annotators. And we get a confidence score for each segment, which is very important, right? So uh, basically that's how we do things. Um, but one of the main goals within uh, Maria de Maes to um, initiative is being able to um, release the data that we're using, raw data, to the scientific community. Okay, uh, we're using unidentified data. It's anonymized. We don't know the names of the candidates, but uh, we're using sensitive data. We're talking about faces and we're talk when talking about speech, uh, those cues are bi called biometric cues. Um, can be uh, used to identify a person, and that is considered sensitive. And in the European law, and now I know that also in the US there's a big issue about this, which I'm happy to hear, um, uh, in the European law uh, there's a, a very restricted law uh, and regulation, regulations on data protection. So, um, how can we manage this? <laughs> Uh, well, within Christina, uh, participants who are being recorded sign an informed consent. This informed consent uh, informs them on what we are going to do in Christina. Yeah? So, uh, and how we are going to use the raw data even. This is something that we are currently working on. We need to inform them what we do with raw data. Right? They sign this, fine, so we can use it. Uh, within the consortium, technical partners sign another agreement, a confidentiality agreement, because we're dealing with sensitive data, right? So we need to guarantee that when we download this data, it is well secured, all the computers have got passwords and so on and so forth. This is very strict and this is very serious, yeah? Um, but on the same, at the same time, um, within the project, we do have an agreement on dissemination in the data management plan which means, of course, uh, Europe is not paying for just um, having research on this very tiny little area and not sharing it to the scientific community. Europe is also paying for sharing what we get in this project with uh, the scientific community. So let's see how we deal with this problem. So far, and I am happy to say that mm, this was 
quite recent, but now in the department, there's uh, some support that is helping us deal with this issue. Um, uh, this CREP, you can go to the web, is an internal committee for the ethical review of projects, right? Uh, when I first collected my first uh, data set, this didn't exist. And I was like, ah, but how do I do this? How can I write uh, like this informed consent? Um, so it, it was, I was kind of puzzled by all this. But now there are certain procedures and certain templates that you can use and so on and so forth. And then uh, obviously all the data is revised by this ethical committee. And in Christina, we also have an internal ethical committee and it's a medical ethical committee by one of the uh, medical doctors in the project in Akute Tobinga. So, um, but still, uh, when thinking about releasing the data set, we need to take care of all these issues, licenses and conditions for data access. That's the reason why I asked that question, Victoria. <laughs> now you know. Uh, so um, we, we're working on it, uh, and it and it's not um, something simple, as you hopefully now uh, understand after this, after this workshop. So in any case, uh, there are many questions I, that arise, um, one of which is where um, do we put all this data, what repository uh, do we use? Um, so many questions to be answered yet. So I'm very happy that this Maria de Maestro initiative is going to uh, like lead the way for us to solve these issues and probably also set the path for other people coming and, and, and facing these same issues or some of the groups dealing with similar issues with data protection to join efforts and say, well, now we've got some established procedures that uh, we can follow and other people can also benefit from, right? Um, so some conclusions. So far in Christina, we're dealing, as uh, Leo said, with nonverbal emotional behavior. Uh, we want to enlarge this and annotate not only nonverbal emotional behavior, affective behavior, but rather nonverbal and verbal communication, because uh, <coughs> communication is us is something holistic. Uh, we want to enlarge this database that we are connecting uh, in Christina, not only for evaluation, which was the, the first focus um, in the project, but also for training, right, and generation purposes. <laughs> And again, uh, we want to uh, develop interactive research lines and some examples, all of them dealing with computational linguistics. Now you know <laughs> where we come from, right? But um, we, we do think that we have a lot to say in this field. Um, so uh, computational linguistics and visual character design and control, um, computer vision and, and multimodal communication as a holistic event. So uh, there are many people to thank, and I just wanted to give you a flavor of the, the kind of material that we annotate. So I asked for collaboration in, in the annotator, annotator's uh, team, and we got this. If it's working. Ah, it's not working. Sorry. <laughs> it was, thank you for your attention, uh, uh, goodbye. So it, wait, perhaps you can tune it in while I <laughs> thank all the people. Uh, these are the people in red uh, from the um, UPF department, different areas. And those are the experts in the Christina Consortium. It is not really uh, relevant. So uh, just the last question. Is all we need data? <laughs> uh, I hope that I was able to send the message, the take home message, that it's not all about data. We need to, no, it's not working, that's okay. They don't want to appear. <laughs> but they, I mean, it's not, it's not all data, as I was saying. Uh, there are many things, many more things that we need to be able to reproduce and share our data with the scientific community. And uh, they are very important to take care about. And well, maybe we also need some love <laughs> in between to be able to carry this team of people who is uh, devoting a lot of time and effort for the mere reason of getting a tiny hint on how human interaction, uh, human computer interaction uh, is, is all about, right? So. Anyway, thank you for your attention. <laughs>